the human brain is, has to be really huge, has to be really large to be able to perform this complex function called consciousness. But it's so large, it has to be so large, in fact, that it kills, uh, you know, one out of five women who give birth without modern medicine to help mm -hmm. them. You know, so it's, it's really, that's really, you know, messy design, a bad design. <laughs> I mean, you, you wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to make something that, you know, babies kill their mothers, you know, one out of every five times. Well, and there are many other problems. God might have mother issues. Yeah, you, you, you <laughs> might have mother know. issues, yeah. <laughs> and there are other problems. The brain is, you know, a huge hog. I mean, it, it, it sucks up all the oxygen and all the energy, you know, tons amount of oxygen and energy. So you're wasting a lot of your breathing and eating and so forth just to feed this brain. So it's very inefficient. And it's very vulnerable to injury. I mean, it's, it's a very delicate organ. If it gets injured, your whole cognitive functions can be hugely damaged. You, you know, you can lose your sight, you could lose your reason, uh, you could lose control of your emotions. I mean, it, it's a very vulnerable organ. It's not what a god would design. And a god wouldn't need to design this because if a god exists, then obviously a mind can exist without a body because god is without a body. So we could have minds without brains. We don't need brains. God could just give us a soul, like the Christians actually think we have. And if we had a soul, and it did all the actual consciousness and perceiving and thinking, we wouldn't need a brain. So we wouldn't have to kill our mothers. We wouldn't have to have this organ that's sucking up all our energy and making our bodies very inefficient. We wouldn't have this delicate organ that could easily be injured and, and ruin our cognitive faculties and so forth. Uh, there would be no need for that brain. But if God does not exist, in fact, if it's impossible for a mind to exist without a fleshy organ to create it, then it necessarily follows that the only way to have a conscious being is to have this large, messy, vulnerable brain. So isn't it surprising that on the assumption that there's no such thing as a disembodied mind, it necessarily predicts that the only way there could be a, a, a mind is to have this complex brain. Lo and behold, we have this huge complex brain. And yet on the Christian theory, we expect the exact opposite. We expect to have souls, not brains. Well, why do we even need brains? We need brains if atheism is true. So the existence of large brains is positive proof that atheism is true. But, uh, and, and because, you know, if the Christian God would build something differently. Now the Christian will respond to try to make up excuses for why God made the brain, but, uh, you know, these excuses are just pulled out of thin air. Uh, and they don't really rescue the theory. It's still the fact that the only way atheism can be true is if we have these large brains. We have these large brains, that's evidence for atheism. It might not be proof, mm -hmm. it might not settle the issue, but it's evidence for it. Uh, and, and if God had some weird reason to do this, then it means that God had some weird reason to make the universe look exactly like it would have to look if God did not exist. And that seems highly improbable.